Um, our teacher told us how these kids were like basically just left in the um, 
money that we raised for that? Like a little over six thousand dollars. We recounted it. I was able to get a few more donors to come in and pull that I could give. And we would pull up just actually just under six thousand dollars. <laughs> but we had a demonstration and it was like I think the first year they did it, they had like water that had like scraped brick in it. That was supposed to like represent the germs and stuff that were in the water. And um, they poured it into the bucket that had like just a little filter that cost like 10 bucks. But it can be like 10 years, it can be minimum without being had to replace. the button on the filter and clean water would come out. It was really cool. And uh, people that are need of water, like they still have to like walk for water and all that and like balance the heavy buckets on their head, which I don't understand how they do it. Don't ask me how they do it. Um, but they still have the, like, knowing that they do have the clean water, but it just takes longer. But, um, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah was, but, um, some people will actually get, like, diseases from the water that, like, make them all swollen and puffy, and it's, it's really sad. And some people, like, like, our teacher, I think, no, I think it, when I did further studying about of this, like the city schools and all that, there were kids that literally could do this to their legs and touch. Like and like the biggest part of their leg, it was this brown. It's this big around. It just made me sick. I I couldn't even really stand it. And you could see their rib cage and all that and I just I just think that that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so next we're going to have a reminder of why water is important to Christians and we're going to be reading a um, skit that um, Susan heard as, as she took part and represented our church. And uh, at World Day of Prayer, and that was at what church, Susan? New Hope. New Hope. Um, and so we'll be um, reminding you of the story you heard last week. Jesus left Judea and started back to Galilee. In order to get there, he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. As he sat there, a Samaritan woman came to draw water. Everyone knows that Jews and Samaritans don't associate with one another. If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you the living water. Sir, I'm just noticing that you have no bucket and the well is deep. Excuse me if I'm being rude, but where are you going to get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this well and drank from it himself as did also his sons and flocks and herds? Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water that I give will never be thirsty again. Indeed, the water I give will become in them a spring of water, gushing up to eternal life. Sir, give me this water, so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. Go call your husband and come back. I have no husband. You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors 
pastors worship, Dr. Spelton, but you claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Who is right? Believe me, a time is coming when you will worship God neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. The time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship God in spirit and in truth. Indeed, it is just such worshipers that God seeks. God is spirit, and those who worship God must worship in spirit and in truth. Well, either way, I know the Messiah is coming. I'm sure the Messiah will explain everything to us. I who speak to you am the Messiah. You, the Messiah. Then, leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? Well, when they heard that, everyone left the town to meet Jesus. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of what the woman said to them. So when the Samaritans met him, they urged him to stay with them. He stayed with them for two days, and because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, No longer does our faith depend on your story. We've heard for ourselves, and we know that this really is the Savior of the world. So last Sunday, Pastor Lori spoke about the well and the Samaritan woman. And water, I'm just mentioning that how central water is to our faith as Christians. And we have many symbols that we've just heard today about service, that was about water, about the fountain and the flowing water, about uh, that evokes our baptism, about clean water and clean hands.